kind of quickly, but I definitely want to get into what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about the office of a prophet. And uh, in review, uh, we, we know that according to Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, that the uh, that uh, prophets and the prophets ministry is a five-four headship governmental ministry. It is it is not just a gift; it is a ministry. It is, in fact, it is an extension of of Jesus Christ's ministry as the prophet. Jesus was the prophet, and so uh, it's not a gift of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk more about the mantle and the gifts of the Spirit uh, as they relate to the prophets. Um, mantle, um, but they are, they, they are uh, an extension of, of Christ's ministry. Um, they function in a higher realm of ministry than one who operates in the spirit of prophecy or, in, or has the gift of prophecy. So the gift of prophecy, operating in the spirit of prophecy, um, that's all good, and, and, but the prophet functions in a ministry and operates in a higher realm of ministry. And of course, to whom much is given, much is required. And so when we, we have to understand that, that God requires us, requires us uh, as, as uh, those in the ministry, uh, ministry gifts, uh, we have more responsibility. And um, so uh, these, the prophet has the ability to speak uh, into uh, the lives of individuals, churches, businesses, and even nations. Uh, they have a, a tremendous uh, responsibility. And um, the uh, office of the prophet uh, does not, the prophet does not minister just for edification, exhortation, and comfort, but also operates in guidance. Prophet can, can, can release guidance uh, re and they can rebuke, they can release judgment, correction, and revelation. They, they, they not only, so it's not just edification, exhortation, and comfort. Because they're in that office, many times they have to rebuke. They have to release judgment, the judgment of God, the correction uh, of God, and also revelation. And so the prophet's office also, uh, let me say, is uh, it, it brings a, a, a higher level of authority. It has a higher level of authority not found in the other two prophetic realms of, of, of the spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophecy. It's part of, as I said before, and I'm just reviewing quickly, is the perfecting of the saints. So the work, so the saints can do the work of the ministry. Uh, they are the prayer, prepare God's people uh, uh, for Christ. Um, and so the, their, their, uh, their spiritual authority is much higher. And of course they have greater responsibility. The prophet is a spokesperson for God. They're speaking on behalf of God. They do not speak for themselves. They do not speak for themselves. The words that they release of the judgment is, is coming with the authority and the backing of God himself. And, um, and as we said before, that the, that the ministry of the prophet uh, should be recognized in the church, should be recognized in every church. We know some churches are a nonprofit organization and they don't recognize prophets at all, but they should be recognized in the church but it is also under, uh, that you have to understand that is also up to the local ministry leadership to judge the prophecies or to judge uh, the prophet's ministry uh, and his prophecies or her prophecies and that the prophet must be willing to submit to the local authority of the church. While the prophet's ministry may be translocational, mobile, they may move around because, and I'll show you some of that, uh, through the scripture, and uh, but his authority is limited to the volition of the local oversight. So if there's a pastoral uh, uh, um, uh, group that that uh, that governs and, and, and the church, 
a prophet comes in to minister or is ministering, that local leadership is where uh, that local leadership is what governs the extent of that prophecy, judging that prophecy and the prophet's words. Uh, uh, and and uh, so the prophet must be subject to the leadership of the local church. Now, we said all that, now I wanna get into, I told you I was gonna be talking about uh, the, uh, the prophet's mantle. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to I'm going to talk about that and then and then I'm going to try to I'm going to try to get through talking about the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament prophets, the uh, prophets under the Old Covenant, prophets under the New Covenant. Um, let's let's deal with the prophet's mantle, because in order to in order to be a prophet, there is a certain um, uh, mantle that the prophet carries. Now, what is a mantle? And let's let's deal with that. Well, you know, if we just take it from the uh, just from Webster's dictionary, it says it's something uh, that a mantle is something that covers, it envelops, uh, and an, or or it conceals. So the mantle from uh, Webster says that a mantle is something that covers, envelops, and or conceals. And 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 when you read uh, in the in the scripture, and I want to go to um, I want to go to to First uh, Samuel. Let's go to the scripture in First Samuel. I want to talk about mantle, the mantle of the prophet. I'm not talking about all kind of mantles. I'm talking about the mantles of mantle of the prophet now, because we're talk, This is uh, we're talking about uh, this is the school of the prophets. So I want you to turn with me in your Bibles. To, I want you to turn to 1 Samuel. And I want you to uh, uh, go to the 15th chapter. And I want you to look at the 27th verse. And it says, I'm going to start at the 26th for context. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Verse 27 says, and as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Now, this is, we see, this is the first time we see excuse me, this word mantle. Now we see mantle before when it talks about uh, jail, when, when uh, uh, Cicero came, uh, we don't, we're not gonna get into that, but that's a different word, it's, it's a different meaning. The first time that we've seen this Hebrew word in, this, in the scripture for mantle is we see it here in 1 Samuel 15 and 27. And it just basically says that when, 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 uh, when, when uh, Samuel prophesied to Saul, and said to Saul that he was in disobedience to God. See, he's speaking a word of, of, of correction and, and judgment. He says, you have been disobedient to God, and therefore God has taken your kingdom and given it to someone else. And, and the Bible says that as Samuel turned to walk away from Saul, Saul grabbed the skirt of his mantle, and the skirt of his mantle was torn. It was rent. And so, and, and so Samuel used that similitude, prophetic similitude to say that, that this was a demonstration that the kingdom of Israel had been torn away from Saul and given to another man. Of course, we know that that was David. Look at, look at uh, um, uh, let's also look at, at uh, 1 Samuel. Let's look at the 28th chapter, 1 Samuel 28, and let's look at verse 13. Excuse me, I'm sorry, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I, I really meant to go to, um, yeah, 1 Samuel, that's right. Um, 
let me let me let me just so I want to make sure I got the right Samuel first Samuel let's look at let's let's look I think I I, I think really what I what I was looking at was 15 and, and 27 and 28 and um and so that's what I that's what I was referring to but look at look at first first uh first kings that's what I want to go to now first kings the 19th chapter I'm sorry first kings 19 and and verse 13 most of us are familiar with this scripture uh, it says, uh, I'm going to read 12 in order for context. And after the earthquake, the fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what do, dost thou hear, Elijah? So we see again, Elijah had a mantle. We see Samuel had a mantle. Elijah had had a mantle. Uh, the uh, the Hebrew word here for mantle is is a word I can't even I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's M E I Y L, and it is the Hebrew word in Strong's four five nine eight, and it and and it speaks of a covering. If the mantle was a covering, it was a robe, uh, an upper robe, and it was an outer garment it was not they had they had their tunics and then upon it they had their mantle and uh and so it was an outer garment and uh, and then one of the definitions for for this particular word is a garment worn over the tunic by by an individual of rank so the mantle the mantle is really what gives the prophet their rank. What gives them rank in the spirit is this mantle. And I'm gonna talk about what's included in that mantle, but that mantle. And so the, the mantles that were worn, the priests wore a mantle and, and the prophets wore a mantle and they were recognizable. These mantles were recognizable. You could actually uh, recognize uh, these mantles and recognize whether an individual was a prophet, whether an individual was a, a priest by their mantle. And so we need to know what the mantle is so we can recognize the prophet's manual. Um, in 1 Samuel, I'm going to go back to, to chapter 28 and verse number 13. And it says, and the king said unto her, this is talking, talking about King uh, Saul. Is he, had, he had consulted a witch. And it says, uh, and the king said unto her, be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman, which was a witch, said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Verse 14 says, and he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up. And he is covered with a mantle. He is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. How did he know that it was Samuel? She described the mantle that was upon Samuel. Now, we know that, that, that this was... Uh, um, that we are not to consult witches, but Saul consulted the witch. God intervened in that, and I won't get into all of that. But what I want you to see is again, the mantle that covenant. He, he said, what did you see? Who did you see? She said, I see this old man and he's covered with a mantle. She describes the mantle. And because the, he, Saul had dealt, dealt Samuel had dealt with Saul, Saul knew that it was Samuel by his mantle. And so we're going to talk about what the mantle includes because if you don't, you, you either got it or you don't have it. You know, 
That's it. You either have it or you don't. But anyway, let's go on. So we see that when, when uh, in in First King nineteen, that the mantle, when 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 uh, Elijah went into the cave and said, "I'm I'm the only one left," and was looking for the voice of the Lord and and discerning the voice of the Lord and the mountains and the and all of the different things that happened, lightning. But the Bible says there was a still small voice that was released, and then he took his mantle and put it over his face before the Lord. So we see again the mantle we see on Samuel. We see that Elijah had a mantle. Let's look at Second Kings. Second Kings. Look at Second Kings. And let's look at uh, chapter two and verse eight. This is this is uh, the calling of of um, of Elisha. Look at verse eight. And Elijah took his mantle, wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Now, before I, before I um, get to that, I want, you to, I want you to understand that prior to, let's look at that, let's, prior to, uh, to this, when, when Elijah, uh, I don't have this in my notes, but if you, if you look in 1 Kings, and, and uh, you'll find that when Elijah, when God told e Elijah, and he came out of the cave. He said, I want you to go in. I want you to anoint a king, Jehu. I want you to, I mean, um, Jehaziel. I want you to anoint Jehu. I want you to, and then I want you to, to uh, anoint Elijah in your stead. The Bible talks about when he went, he put his, his mantle upon Elijah. That's the first thing he did. I was trying to, uh, I, I didn't have that. I mean, I, I know it's in, um, Let's look at let's look at First Kings nineteen again. I'm sorry. Look at First Kings because I think it's in First Kings nine, uh, nineteen, and I believe it's the nineteenth verse. It's nineteen nineteen. Yeah, here it is. Now I want you to see because I want you to see what the, this is. What they this mantle represented something. It represented who they were. It represented their office and so on. And so he's going to anoint a prophet in his stead. And verse 19 says, so he departed thence, found Elijah, the son of Zaphath, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him and with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. It, that was significant. He cast his mantle upon him. Verse 20 says, and, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, Kiss my father, my mother, then will I follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again. What, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back. He took the yoke of oxen. He slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people when they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So the, the Elijah's mantle was, he put his mantle upon him which signified a transference, which signified a call. That, that could be likened unto the call of God for a prophet, and, but it doesn't deal with the process. It only deals with the call. And so he lays that mantle upon him. That was like the call of God for this, for Elijah to be a prophet. Now, I want you also, uh, to um, again go to go to go to go to Second Kings, go to Second Kings again. I want to give you scripture because I, I don't want you to be to have your foundations in anything else but the scripture. You can read books. I I, I was just um, I remember uh, uh, that I had a young man that came and joined our church years ago. He's on going on to be with the Lord. But he was at another ministry that was very prophetic, very uh, prophets and so on. Even the senior leader was a prophet. And he was like the 
one of the chief armor bearers of that particular leader. And, but eventually he had to leave, he left the ministry and he came to our ministry. And, uh, and later as he wanted to talk, we talked, one of the things that the issues that he had, he said, is that, is that the, the, uh, the, the particular leader who, who was very prophetic and, and, and I don't doubt was a prophet because just because you're a prophet doesn't mean you're uh, a false prophet doesn't mean you're not an accurate prophet. But one of the things that he said is that said that not only did, did this minister study the Bible, but he also had other books that were mystical books that he read to try to draw on the power of this prophetic gift. And, and, uh, and of course, there, it was a disaster uh, that, that happened as a result of that. And I say that to say this too, is that Pastor Joyce and myself was talking about uh, some books that that are listed on uh, as you go on um, I don't know whether it's what particular book publisher it is but you can go on and you can get Apostle Eckhart's books you can get other ministry good ministry books but right in the midst of all those prophetic books there was a book that said uh, uh, how to do witchcraft right in the midst of that uh, and uh, they, 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 we used to have a saying that said, curiosity killed the cat. You cannot be curious. You cannot open yourself up to these particular books because what they do is they carry with them a spirit. And it's amazing how they slip that in there. You got beautiful Apostle John Eckhart and, and other leading prophetic voices that are very very respectable and, uh, you know, and integrous, but they just slid in there, that book. Now, one of the things that he told me, he said, and that, that his mentor had passed, he had kind of passed, these are the books that I use so that I can get in this realm of the spirit. It's don't do that. That's why I'm spending the time to take you through the scriptures because you, because somebody will tell you a mantle and they won't have one scripture to say anything about what that, they'll have not, no scriptural collaboration for it. And, 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 and many times you'll get, you'll get uh, uh, you'll, the enemy will fool you. So I wanna keep you in the word of God because we know when we stand before God, he's not gonna judge us by the book that, uh, that Apostle Hogan wrote. He's gonna judge us by the word of God. And that's what, that's what we're gonna stand before him and be judged by. Okay, let's look at, again, let's go to 2 Kings, and let's go to the second chapter again, and let's look at verses 13 and 14. Now, what I want you to see is, in the first portion, we see Elijah putting his mantle on Elisha. That's the call, and you got to know the difference between the call and the process. That was the call. But what did he have to do? He had to, to minister. He had to serve Elijah. And so he had to humble himself and he had to be subject and go through the process. Now, he, we know the Bible says he poured water on the hands of Elijah. Elisha did. But Elijah tells him as he's getting ready to be taken, he says to him, if you see me when I'm taken, he said, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of the anointing. I want a double portion of your, your anointing. It's on you. I want it on me, of your spirit, actually, your spirit. And, and Elijah said to him, if you see me when I'm taken, then you can receive that. Look at, look at what, what, what happened. They, he goes. Uh, they, they, Elijah in verse 12 it says and Elisha saw it and he cried this is when the, the angel came to pass the angel came a horse and a chariot of fire in verse 11 came and took Elijah up into heaven and then when Elijah, Elisha saw it he cried my father my father the chariots of Israel the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them to pieces he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood at the bank of Jordan. 
Now we know that Elijah took, when, he, when they crossed Jordan, he took his mantle and he struck the Jordan. That mantle is power. He struck the Jordan and the Jordan opened up. They went over the Jordan. He was taken away from Elisha. And when he was taken away from Elisha, Elisha saw him go up, rent his clothes, took the mantle of Elijah and went back to the same banks of Jordan on the other side. And look what it says. It says that he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also, when he had also had smitten the waters, he did the same thing. They parted hither and thither and Elijah went over. So a mantle was a way of, uh, of identifying the person's office, something they wore uh, externally. And, and, and uh, so it, it is not, uh, it's not internal, it's external. Bible talks about when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us, that mantle comes upon the prophets, the prophets, you know, and it's so it's a it's a it's a it's a way of identifying the prophet. It's a it's a covering for the prophet. It it envelops the prophet, but it also conceals. And I and I and I like the Webster definition because one thing being concealed, uh, I want to say this is because a person has a prophetic uh, has been called to be a prophet does not necessarily mean that they are perfect. And many times the mantle will conceal faults in the individual. And so we, we're, we're not to, uh, uh, to follow after gifts and, and mantles. We're, we're, we're to follow after the word of God and to follow after Christ. That Hebrew word says it's a covering, it's a robe, it's an outer garment. So we know that the spirit of God comes upon us for power to act, to do acts of power and, and so on and to move in, in miracles and signs and wonders and so on. But the, the fruit of the spirit is developed from the inside out. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But before they ever, the Holy Ghost ever came upon them for power, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, breathed upon his disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And they received an internal a release of the Holy Spirit on the inside of them because they could then receive the, 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 the born again experience because Jesus had rose. They had to believe that, he, that, that Jesus rose from the dead and they could not believe that until Jesus rose from the dead. And at that moment in that room, when he breathed upon them, they received the Holy Ghost inside. They received the regeneration, the new born again spirit. When they, the day of Pentecost, they received the Holy Spirit upon, which, which was releasing the power of God on their life. So there is the spirit within and there is a spirit upon. The mantle is upon because it is, it is visible. You'll be able to see uh, this in prophets. You'll be able to, to, to see that mantle upon them. Uh, you don't have to dig, dig very deep. They operate in that mantle. Now, also, um, concerning the mantle, I said this last week, the prophets, the, 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 uh, the, the, um, uh, the prophet, and, and I, and I believe this, I, I believe that this can be verified by the operations of the Holy Spirit in prophets. But I believe that a prophet's mantle includes, includes their gifting. And I believe that, that in order to be a prophet, I believe that, that, there, that there are uh, certain gifts that must be a part of the prophet's mantle. First, the prophet has the gift of prophecy. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 speaks of the gift of prophecy as one of the verbal gifts, the speaking gifts 
diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation, and then prophecy. I believe that every prophet has in their mantle the gift of prophecy. I believe also that uh, they have one or more of the revelation gifts that operate in their life. That's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, or discerning of spirits. One or more of those gifts, because those are revelation gifts. And prophets have revelation. And, and so they, they access that uh, through, the, through, the gifts, through the gifts of the spirit that are resident in their mantle. They, the word of knowledge is, 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 a, is, a, is a supernatural revelation of God of things that are present and past and present. Word of wisdom is a supernatural manifestation. It's a gift that, that, that uh, deals with revelation concerning the future. So there, there, uh, there must be revelation gifts that are in the mantle of the prophet. Now, let me say this because I, you know, we, it would take much more time to really dissect this as much as I would like. But let me say this, is that don't get in your mind uh, uh, that, um, these, that, that all of these gifts operate in the same way in every one. They operate differently in different people. And so uh, some people get their, some prophets get their revelation through, uh, through the expression of a seer. They see visions and dreams. It may come that way. Then some, uh, it flows to them like the Nabe, flowing, overflowing. And they can get, and you can have through your prophecy, you can release a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. So it can operate different ways in different people. So it, it, it's not necessary, we're not all the same. There's different types of prophets and it would take me a long time to go through the prophets in the old, some of the prophets in the Old Testament and how the, it functioned in them. Prophets in the New Testament, John the Baptist was a prophet in the New Testament and so on. And how these, the, 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 uh, uh, these gifts operated in them. So you need to understand Prophets get revelation. So revelation gifts operate. That's part of their mantle. They don't just prophesy. They have revelation. So many times their prophecies are, are, are for lack of a better word, laced with revelation. It could be revelation of things in the past, in the present, which would be a word of knowledge. It could be things that are revelation in the future. And that's the word of wisdom. Then they also can have uh, the discerning of spirits. And the discerning of spirits is an ability to, to see and discern in the spirit realm. In fact, discerning of spirits, the word discern means to see. And so it really, to me, is connected to the, um, the, the seer's anointing, where they, where they see, you know, they have uh, uh, visions and dreams and so on. But at least, at least because in the Old Testament, they prophesied. In the Old Testament, revelation gifts operated. Um, and so the, in, 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 in Elijah, in Jeremiah, they, they operate in these gifts. And know this, that in the Old Testament, in the old, under the Old Covenant, the only ones that had the Spirit of God that came upon them was the priest, the prophet, and the king. Those were the only three people in which the spirit of God came on in, in, uh, in the Old Testament. All of the gifts of the spirit operated in the Old Testament except for tongues, tongues and interpretation of tongues. That is exclusive under the new covenant. That is exclusive under the new covenant. And under the old covenant, they had the, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, they had the gift of, of, of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, the revelation gift, the discerning of spirits, and they had prophecy. The only gifts that were not operating during that time is the diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And so the prophet had, in order for the prophet to be a, a prophet in the Old Testament, the qualifications are the same for the New Testament. I'll tell you the, di the, the difference 
between the old covenant prophets, but the qualification, they had words of, they had the revelation gift, at least one or more of the revelation gift, and they had the gift of prophecy, prophecy because they prophesied. So, so in their mantle, it is the word of wisdom, uh, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, at least one of the revelation gifts, and, and the gift of prophecy. Um, now, there's also in the mantle of the, of, the, um, of the prophet, he has his gifts. Now, we talked about the gifts, the gifts. But not only does the mantle have gifts, revelation gifts, the gift of prophecy, but it also, the mantle has authority in it. There is an authority that is in that mantle also. There's a tremendous amount of authority that's given to prophets. And so you need to understand. And, and, and let, let me give you a scripture um, that most of you probably, if especially prophets, because they probably read this many times, is in Jeremiah. And it's Jeremiah, the first chapter and the 10th verse. Listen, it says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. That is the authority. There is an authority to uh, pull down, root up, destroy. There is an authority in that mantle. And it, and it, is, a, it is a stature in the spirit. It is, it is a, when, when, they, when, when Jesus taught, they said, he does not teach like the Pharisees. He teaches as one that has authority. So in the prophet's mantle, there is a level of authority also that's given by God. It's not just prophesying. It's not just, just receiving the gifts and having the gifts operate in, in, in your life, but it's also an authority that is given by God. That's why the call is so very important to understanding the call of God and then the process, then the process. And of course you have in that mantle gifts, you have in that mantle authority, you have in that mantle office. Office is not who the prophet is. It is the, it is the place uh, of, 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 uh, of authority in which he stands in. And prophets are, have access to the counsel of God, to the counsel of God. I, don't, I, I, I want you to see. So it's not just gifts. It's the authority. And with authority comes a level of responsibility. Responsibility. And if we don't understand that we have, it's a, it's a, it's a great level of responsibility because when you're given the authority to root up, throw down, destroy, to build. Uh, in fact, um, in the 16th verse, it talks about that to utter his, the judgments of God against the wicked. That's why I say prophets can rebuke. And so, so prophets have to be very careful because you can use your authority, you can abuse your authority. But it's an authority that goes along with the, the, office, with the office. So it's the gifts, it's the authority, and it's the office. It's the place where God sets you. And um, so I want you to, uh, now I want to just share with you uh, some of the differences in the old, old covenant prophets and the new covenant prophets. We, we got a few more, we got a few more minutes. In the old Testament, you got to understand that under the old covenant, Jesus had not come. Jesus had not died for our sins. And, and, the, and the ones that experienced the spirit of God coming upon them was the priest, the prophet, and the king. Those were the three. And so you didn't have everybody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You didn't have people that, that were born again. And so the, the many times people would go to the prophet to get, in, to get instruction or to get revelation concerning the future concerning certain issues 
and and under the old covenant that was that was very allowable because because and and very typical because they didn't have the spirit of god coming upon them that was something that that uh that was that was um that was set aside for the priest the spirit of god came on the priest the spirit of god came on the prophet and it came on the king and so you got to understand that that many times in the old testament it it appears that the prophets were isolated that they were you know they seem to be nomads or whatever you know seem to be wanderers or and, and but you have to understand this is that they were living under the old covenant where the spirit of god was not poured out like it is poured out in the church and so they they, they since the spirit of God was not poured out into church, they took on uh, the responsibility many times of giving people direction, giving people uh, instruction, um, uh, giving people uh, the leading of the Lord. Uh, and and uh, because the people didn't have the spirit of God coming upon them. So they would go to the prophet. You remember when Saul was looking for his donkeys and they said, let's go to the prophet and ask the prophet where the donkeys are. You know, and so you got to understand that. But if you don't understand that the reason they were loners many times is because they were experiencing God in a way that not the typical person could experience. So they were, they took on a, a greater role and responsibility for guidance for, for the people of God. Now, the, in the, in the, in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the New Covenant prophets, it is different. There is a different role. Not saying that they cannot give guidance. Yes, they can. Yes, they can give, you know, but the Bible says in Acts that when Peter interpreted what happened on the day of Pentecost, he said, the Spirit of the Lord shall... Uh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, look at, look at the New Testament, the new covenant. We are now baptized with the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Ghost living within us. He's our helper. He's our comforter. So we experience a, 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 a normal believer that has received the spirit of God, been born again, and receive the spirit of God, some that are, and, and baptized with the Holy Ghost, they have a sense that they, they have the spirit of God in them. They have the spirit of God in, on the inside of them, bearing witness with their spirit. They, they, can, they can prophesy, they, all may prophesy, they can prophesy. They can receive revelation from God. Now, not on the, not on the level of the mantle of the prophet, but they can receive revelation. So we are not spiritually dead in the church. All of those were spiritually dead. And, and the only one that was experiencing these supernatural manifestations of God upon their life, uh, you know, for the most part, was the priest, the prophet, and the king. So we have to understand that the New Testament prophets take on a different responsibility. And I want to talk about, I want to talk about that. Because in the Old Testament, there are some good things that we can learn from the Old Testament prophets. I, I like the, the, that I, I've studied uh, these, many of the Old Testament prophets, and especially Samuel, because I believe that Samuel was a prophet and a judge. And, and, uh, and Samuel was, was, an, was, was a great example of the prophet's ministry, and there's much revelation that we can receive from uh from samuel's prophetic uh grace and his prophetic office and what he did as a prophet uh there's an interesting scripture you can write it down i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go there but first samuel the seventh chapter the 13th verse then you can jump over to the 16th and then the 17th verse and it talks of, well man i may as well go there just let, just let me let me go there First Samuel, look at chapter seven, look at verse number 13. It says, 
So the Philistines were subdued and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Samuel was the prophet. Look at, go down to verse 13. Excuse me. Yeah, go down to verse 16. It says, and he went from year to year in a circuit to Bethel, to Gilgal, to Mizpah, and he judged Israel in all those places. I like this because I think that this is a this is a really a prophetic picture of, of some of the responsibilities and how the prophet should function as it relates to God's people. It says he made a circuit. He and and he judged in those places, judged Israel. What does it say? It says Bethel. Bethel means house of God. So prophets need to be able to operate in the house of God. Gilgal is the, is the place in which uh, Joshua circumcised the people at Gilgal before they went into the promised land. And, and, when he, and, and so it's a place of covenant. And it is also a place of, of rolling the reproach because God said, I'm rolling the reproach of Egypt off of these people. And I'm doing it by a covenant. All the people that came out, the men had not been circumcised. They had not kept the circumcision. Circumcision is a, is, is, is a sign of covenant. And so prophets should, should they, it's no more long ranger. In the Old Testament, I know, it, it looked like they were long ranger. They were nomads, you know, and here it is, they, Elijah's in the cave crying and, and so on and so forth. It, it is under that old covenant. You got the spirit of God coming on you. You having visions and dreams and revelation and God is giving you and the and every and everybody else except for the king and the priest are spiritually dense. You go, you're gonna feel like you're out of place. Some of I think most prophets feel like they're out of place anyway, even in the new covenant. But how, can you imagine how they felt when these people were not filled with the Holy Spirit? They didn't know God like like uh, these. Prophets knew them in the Old Testament. So in the, in the, uh, you see that Bethel, Gilgal, and then it says he ministered at Mizpah. Mizpah means watchtower. Mishta, Mis, Mizpah, it means to look out as a watchman. This tells me that Samuel operated house of God, covenant, and he operated as a watcher. He operated, and, and to me, that is the prayer ministry of the prophet. I believe that gave him great longevity. I, I believe that, that made the Bible says that none of his words fell to the ground. There's not many prophets can say that. None of his words fell to the ground. God would not allow one word of him to fall to the ground. So prophets must understand that they must be connected to Bethel. They must be connected to the house of God. They need to be, they need to be in covenant. They need to be in covenant with, with the church, in covenant with ministry and the ministry gifts. And then they need to be watchmen. One of, the, one of the, the responsibilities of a prophet is to shamar. It is a word that we get from Hosea, the, sec, the 12th chapter, when it talks about that by a prophet, God delivered Israel out of, out of bondage. By a prophet, they were preserved. That word there means to, uh, it means to, to uh, it, the, the, the actual Hebrew word is shamar, and it means to protect, to guard and to form a hedge. Prophets have so much, much authority and power and many times not understanding how much, and it's like dynamite. If you don't know what you have, you can blow yourself up and blow everybody else up. And I say this again, I never forget it. When we were going through with the church. It was the prophets. I mean, the prophets, uh, prophetess May uh, and other prophets, they were constantly 
giving me the word of the Lord, confirming. And then that Sunday when they stood up and they began to make the decrees concerning our church. And we've seen things turn around because they have authority in the spirit. They have stature in the spirit. The devil knows who the prophets are. And that's, it's like Paul said, Paul cast out devils and then the sons of Sneva tried to do it. And the devil said, look, we know Paul, we know Jesus, who are you? The mantle of the prophet, the stature that they have, the authority, the office is known in the spirit realm, just like apostles. The devil knows who you are <laughs> in the spirit realm. And so it's very important that you understand the authority you have and you use, utilize it in a way that will be a blessing and build up the church. So one of the, the things that a prophet does is shamar or, or, uh, uh, the, or protect, guard, and hedge. So mispa is the watchtower of the prophet. That means that the prophet has to be in prayer and a watchman on the wall of the church, helping to guard the church, to secure the church. It's not about you. It's about being a officer of the kingdom of God and serving the church of Jesus Christ, which is his body. And so, uh, these and so I love Samuel. If you, and you can study more about Samuel. But it says that as long as Samuel was prophet over Israel and judge, that the Philistines, the enemy, no longer attacked Israel. One of the things that prophets do is they build a hedge. They build a hedge around the church. They build a hedge of protection for the people of God. They are very important. They decree a thing and it will be established. They have great authority in the spirit realm. And if they don't understand that, they will, you, they, they will, they will find themselves trying to appease people's flesh. God told Jeremiah, their faces, you are not to be intimidated by the faces of people that you have to rebuke or that you have to correct. You need to understand, but you don't need to use that as a, as a, as a, as a tool, as a weapon to destroy people. You don't have to use it as a weapon to destroy people. So, so the, oh, the New Testament prophets, let me see, oh boy. Let me, let me take a little bit more time because I'm trying to, to get through this. This is actually what I'm teaching right now is really uh, um, really more of about, uh, I'd say about five sessions because I'm just, each one of these is just pulled out of a teaching. But anyway, let me, let me do this. The, um, I wanna deal with, uh, again, the New Testament prophets. I wanna show you something. I want you to look at Acts the 11th chapter. Because now you're a new covenant prophet. If you're a prophet now, you're a new covenant prophet. And so let's look at, look at the new covenant prophet and their function as it relates to the church in, uh, in the 11th chapter of the book of Acts in the New Testament. Acts 11 and 27. And it says, um, we're going to read 27 through 30. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren that dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now, first thing I want you to understand is Agabus is coming to Antioch. There were really basically two main churches that functioned during this time. There was the Jerusalem church, which was a complete Jewish church. Then there was the Antioch church, which was a multicultural different. They, they had different ones in that, in that church. And he comes down 
and presents to the church about the revelation about uh, there's going to be a famine. And, uh, and of course, uh, the elders, the Bible says uh, that uh, they determined that they'd raise money and send it to Ju Judea. So you see Agabus is operating and presenting his gift into the, in the church to help to build the church, to help to guard the church. Because that, that in, if you look historically, that famine was so bad that, and, 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 the, and because of the revelation that the famine was coming, the church was able to gather resources and was able to, their people were able to be taken care of during the time of the famine. So that we need prophets because prophets have revelation. They, 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 uh, they're in the counsel of God. They know things. Now, let me look at, let's look at some, uh, another scripture. Uh, in fact, let's, let's, um, let's go to the 21st chapter of Acts, Acts 21. And let's look at verse 10. It says, and they, and they tarried many days there, came down from Jerusalem and Judea, a certain prophet. Wait a minute, did I, did I hit this? 21 and 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is what, that's right. Many days they came down to Judah, a certain prophet named Agabus. Now, most of us heard of Agabus in the New Testament. And when he was coming to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, this is when Agabus is prophesying to Paul and saying, Paul, when you go to Jerusalem and he does a spiritual, he does a, a, a act, a prophetic act, and he binds his hands and binds himself with Paul's girdle. And he said, the same way that I'm bound, they're gonna bind you when you get down there. Now, but what I want you to see also is, is that Paul says in verse 13, what meaneth thou to weep and break thine heart? For I'm ready not only to be bound only, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in other words, Paul did not, he went on into Jerusalem anyway. And, and I want you to understand, this is prophets in the New Testament have to understand, is, is that, is that, uh, when you give a prophetic word, it is not up to you to make somebody do anything. It is it, what you need to do is just give the word that the Lord gave. Now, I, some say Paul missed God. I don't believe that. I believe Paul knew what was going to happen to him. And, and all that he was getting was what was going to happen when he got there. Because they... Agabus did not say, you shouldn't go. He just said, this was going to happen. And Paul had to decide whether he was going to go. It was the other people crying, saying, please don't go, Paul. And Paul knew he had to go to Jerusalem. So Paul went. So just because somebody does not uh, seem to obey your word, they have the spirit of God, too. They have the voice of God, too. We're in the, under the new covenant. So they don't take that as Bible. They don't always take it as Bible. And, and it's not to be used to control anybody. Just give what God said, humble yourself, give what God said, and leave it at that. It is up to the person, it's up to the people of whether they will adhere to the word. Again, I want you to look at this, and I and I and I must get to this. I know we were running a little bit over eight o'clock mark, but let's let's look at uh, chapter fifteen of the book of Acts, because I want to show you two more prophets under the new covenant. Chapter Acts, chapter fifteen, and verse number twenty-two. Now I'm going to give you the background because I don't want to read through all of this. This was when the Jerusalem church was adjudicating the issue of whether the, the Gentiles coming into Christ had to become proselyte Jews in order to be saved. That was the whole issue. The Judaizers were saying, look, they gotta be circumcised. They gotta come through. And, and, uh, and so Paul and Barnabas brought it back to the Jerusalem church. 
the apostle over the Jew, the Jerusalem church was James, the brother of Jesus. And the elders, they were adjudicating this. Should they have to do this? Blah, blah, blah. They were going and they were hearing from different apostles, hearing what Peter said about the Gentiles and da, 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 da. And, and, uh, and they're, 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 they're going back and forth. And then James stands up and has the last word. He is the apostle. James was not a pastor. I know people say, well, he was the pastor. He was the apostle James. The Bible says he was an apostle. Never called him a pastor. And James said, this is what I believe. And he went to the book of Amos, the ninth chapter. And he said, he talked about the tabernacle of David being a tabernacle that allowed anyone to come in that did not, that you didn't have to have a sacrifice when you came to the tabernacle of David. The other, the other tabernacle was on Gibeon the Mount, but this was the place in which you could come in and worship was the standard. And so he said, he came to the conclusion that the church, that the tabernacle of David was a type of the church, of the New Testament church, which did not require them to go under and become Judaized and, and become proselyte Jews. Now, they came to that conclusion. And after they came to the conclusion, look at verse 22. Then it pleased the apostles and elders and the whole church to send chosen men, to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Going down to, go down to verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and us to lay upon you no greater burden than these that are necessary. And he goes on to tell them uh, the things that, let, let, me, let me go, I'm, I'm gonna go back up to 27. It says, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas who also tell you the same thing. It seems good to the Holy Ghost. And so and now I want you to go down uh, and I want you to look at in the same chapter uh, 15, I want you to look at the 32nd verse. I'm skipping through a lot. It says, and Judas and Silas being what? Prophets also themselves. Exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Now, let me say this. Judas and Silas were prophets. They were under covenant and under the, 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 um, the authority of the Jerusalem church. When they adjudicated and came up with, they did not have to. They sent Paul and Barnabas back, but they also sent Judas and Silas. And it says they were prophets. And they went down and what did they do? They confirmed them. In other words, they went down and released words of confirmation to what the apostles had adjudicated and said would be done. They were confirming the words of the leaders, the apostle James, the elders at the church in Jerusalem. That is one of the functions of building is to, is to confirm what is being spoken what is being released by the leadership, by the leader of the church. James, the elders, they concluded it. And now they send Barnabas and Paul back, but they also send Judas and Silas. They are prophets. What did they do? And notice this, they sent them. They didn't just get up and say, well, you know, I think I'm, I got to, somebody wants me to come and speak over here. So I'm going over there. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm saying that Prophets need to understand that they need to be under the authority of, of, of apostles and ministry gifts, and they need to submit their, their gift, their grace, their mantle to the leadership. The leadership should be able to say, okay, this is what I want you to do. I remember when we went, we went to uh, Ethiopia the first time. We went, we tra I traveled there. I, I've been there two times. And I traveled to Ethiopia the first time. And one of the things is that, is that and it, it was about, I guess it was about 90 of us all together, Rona, and we went. But, but uh, we were the prophets. We had several prophets that, that came uh, with us. I'm not a prophet, but I prophesy. 
But we got there and an and, and apostle, John ministered, ministered powerful words of God. And, and, and then what would happen is the prophets would get up and they would prophesy and confirm the word through that grace and anointing that, were upon, that was upon their life. And when they would confirm it, the word, then they, it would be an activation of the preach word. I remember we were, uh, one time we were, that we were the heat ministered and, uh, and the prophets prophesied. The healing anointing came in. He literally took off his shirt because the anointing was so strong, had to cut his shirt up and was giving pieces of his shirt to the people that were in the congregation and they would be healed of different diseases and so on. There is a collaboration between the apostolic, the leadership and the prophet that I, I call them the dynamic duel. If they function together, it is, it is awesome. When, 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 a, when a leader can say, okay, now I, I preached on healing. I want you to prophesy a healing word. And, and that prophet can get up and, and release with authority and with power over the people. And then to see those things begin to manifest because God will use the words of the prophet. They are, they are, those words have so much authority in them because that's part of their mantle they have stature in the spirit they can begin to speak into the spirit and demons will move out of the way and if demons don't know who you are if they don't know you're a prophet you, you are not one they know you and and that's why the prophets many times are under so much attack i pray for the prophets because i know i, I live with a prophet so i know I absolutely know. I mean, you know, the things that, that Sister Hogan encounters spiritually, I don't encounter. However, I did have an experience, you know, maybe a weeks ago, I guess, uh, whatever. And, and, and I had, uh, I had a, a spirit, you know, try to attack me in the night. And, I, and, the, and the thing is, is that I don't usually have those kind of experiences. I mean, I've seen this, I know, I, I, I I, I mean, you know, I don't usually see those things, you know, but I know Sister Hogan deals with a lot of the things. I pray for her. I Many times I'm up praying for her because I know, because when you're a prophet, you have access to the spirit realm. But what many times the prophets don't realize, it's not just the good spirit, the spiritual realm where you see God and angels, but you can also see demons and devils. The spirit realm it has a dark side, for lack of a better term, and a and a bright side. And 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 uh, so we have to be very very careful to know. And the and 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 the 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 enemy will hold you to a higher standard. The enemy will hold you to a higher standard. And so you need to 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 walk circumspectly. You need to, as a prophet, you need to know that, that uh, what God has placed upon your life is not for you, is to build the church, is to grow the church. And, and if you can't take assignments like Silas and Judas from the leadership of the church, something is wrong. Something is wrong with that. I will not have a pro prophetic playground at Living Bread. This will not be a prophetic playground where we're attracting people because, you know, they found out we're prophetic and they think they're going to come and they're going to bypass all of the process, going to bypass all the process and, and, uh, and going to be uh, given um, and, 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 and authority being set up on them uh, and they have not walked through the process. Elisha served Elijah. I am absolutely sure that that process was very, very, very strenuous and did not happen overnight. But because he remained faithful, God was able to, to he had already had the call because the mantle has been placed upon him. But now he was able to receive that mantle and begin to operate in that mantle and take on that place 
of being really set as the prophet over the over, over the prophets. So I want you to understand, I, I, I went through some things very quickly. I wanted to go into some other expressions of the prophet. I may, I didn't get to talking about some of the things that, you know, prophets do that are not, you know, that are not as obvious as other things, but they're scriptural. But I want you to know that as a prophet carries uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of authority, they carry a tremendous, they have giftings and these gifting operate, I'm not talking about the gift operated in you, um, you know, 10 times, this is a mantle that when they're in the spirit, these gifts operate when they're in the spirit. Don't try to operate them when they're not, when you're not in the spirit. If you're not in the spirit, you're just not in the spirit. Just prophesy edification, exhortation, and comfort. But when you but when when you stand in that office and you know, and you know when you are standing there cloaked in that in that garment, in that, in that mantle of authority, the office, the gifts, that 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 you 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 can now uh, shift atmospheres change directions of, of, of situations. I'm gonna close, but I wanna say this. When we were, and I use this as a lot of example because most many people know about it, but when we were going through with the church in the, in the early stages, we had a prophet, she's gonna be with the Lord, prophet uh, Fiesta Curry. Prophet Curry was a tremendous prophet. She was, we were both members of Labor of Love years ago before we ever, she ever became a member of our church. But one of the things is that she had a tremendous amount of authority uh, in the spirit, stature in the spirit, gifts of the spirit. And it was, and it was her words that, that literally set the stage for us to get our church back. And she prophesied one Sunday as the spirit of God, she, she began to operate in that anointing and, and the whole house was filled with the spirit of God. And she prophesied. She said, God, she said, she turned to me and she said, Apostle, uh, God says you will not lose this church. She didn't even know we were losing it. She didn't even know we were losing because nobody knew. She said, and God said, you will not lose anything that I've given you. And when she prophesied that, we knew it was not her speaking for herself. It was God speaking through her. And we took those words, Sister Hogan took those words, we wrote them down and we put them on Sister Hogan's door of her prayer room. And that word, that word sustained me. When I, when I went, when I, when I got the call that they had sold the building and that we had to be out in 30 days. I, that word, we kept telling God, you said, see, there's an authority with it. It's as if almost, it's God, they're speaking for God. They're not speaking for themselves. I they're speaking for God. Don't speak for yourself because you got an opinion. Don't speak your opinion. Speak what God gives you. And when she spoke that word, we stood on that word. And when I went to court and they and they said that they threw out our purchase agreement, took their purchase agreement and said you can and told them that y'all can proceed with it and uh, and put them out in court. But that word, that word from a prophet. Uh, from a from that authority authoritative word that was spoken sustained us and it was amazing how god literally turned it around i mean they the, they came in uh, to the building i got a call from from arizona from bishop billy right here at jesus tabernacle he was in a, and he was in Arizona on vacation. And he called me and he said, God told me to call you apostle and tell you that you that God's gonna vindicate you. He's gonna prove that you were right. I even had elders that wanted me to say, well, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's not for us to keep the church. But <laughs> he said, God's gonna vindicate you. And, I, and he told me, he said, and I, he said, I don't know what's going on. I told him, I said, well, you know, they, they got a contract on the church. But God had said, he said, I don't care what they say. God, and in a 
about 30 minutes, he called me back and he said, I know who's trying to buy your church. I didn't even know the person. I didn't know the preacher. But he called me back and said, I know who it is. I told him, that's not your church. That church belongs to Apostle Hogan and Living Bread Church. And he said, I gave him your number. And he called me. I'm telling you, the prophet, those prophets had gotten up, uh, prophetess May and, and got before and begin to decree. And then praise God, we had the word from, from, Cur from prophetess Curry. Then Bishop Billy called and gave us that word. And from that time, we talked to the pastor and God turned that thing around. He went back and got his deposit back and would not buy it. And then God had the same judge that, that, that told us that we, had, that we had to move out was the same judge that issued a decree and said, y'all got to give them an opportunity to buy their church back. That's building, that's helping to build the house. That's helping to build what God is establishing. And I am, of, 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 I am so confident that the reason God had us keep this church is because the next move that God is about to do in living bread with the new vision, the new name, the new values and whatever is going to be so much more than we could ever imagine. God is not through with us yet. Let me pray. I didn't went way over, but I hope that you received something tonight that would help you. I hope you wrote down the scriptures, read the scriptures. I know you got books, read the scriptures and ask God to give you a revelation. And God will show you, God will show you, be founded in the scripture, not what, you know, and, and one of the things the Lord told me that, he, and I forgot about, it, he just reminded me, Holy Spirit just reminded me. He, he told me to tell you all, the, the, those of you that are, that are prophets, he said to me to tell you, don't, be an echo, be a voice. That's what he told me to tell you. Don't be an echo. An echo just echoes everything that they hear somebody say, some revelation somebody got. Uh, and, and what happens is, is that you just echoing what everybody else says. I'm not saying that, that, that it's nothing wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong to, to sometimes you, you're saying the same thing because God can be speaking through but don't become an echo. You read a book and you echo that. You hear somebody teach and you echo that. Be a voice. Hear God and only speak what God says. And, and if you don't hear God, get the scriptures because that's a sure word of prophecy. Know your Bible, know the scripture. Be like the Bereans, go and see if what I've been teaching is Bible. Because that is, you can always, you, a prophet should always be able to teach the word, preach the word, because that mantle that, that is on you does not operate all the time. You remember when Gehazi had went and, and stole that, that, that stuff from Naaman and, and uh, you know, and Eli Elijah seen it. But remember, when, but remember when the widow, when she came and her son had died and he said, the Lord hid that from me. He hid it from him. So don't, <laughs> if, 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 it's, if the mantle is not there to reveal to you, then use the word of God and be able to teach and train. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift of the prophet. We thank you, Lord God, for those that you have called to this office, those that you are taking to different levels of process and bringing them full circle, Lord, to the place, Lord, of, of full release. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that the word that's been taught will not be misconstrued, will not be taken out of context, but Lord, that it will be a word that they can take and they can measure, measure themselves by the word because your word is a plumb line your word is a measuring stick father that they will find themselves walking in the fullness of the mantle that you have placed upon them they will help build the church and the kingdom of god your kingdom representatives father father i pray that every demon that has been assigned to these prophets 
that has been assigned to these prophets will hear the voice of this apostle. In Jesus' name, I cancel every assignment to stop them from walking in the fullness of the grace and the office that you called them to, that they will be humble and not offended, Lord, but they will, they will take these words, Lord God, and grow and become the prophets, the leaders, the representatives, the ambassadors of the kingdom that you would desire them to be. We give you all of the glory, we give you all the honor and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Uh, I, I know I went over. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I tried to put a whole three message series in one. I don't know how good a job I did, but I gave you the word. And I, but I, I know that uh, if, you'll, if you'll read them, just read them again and just study them and pray about them and uh, be like Berean and uh, they will benefit you as you walk in your office that God's called you to. God bless you, love you, have a great night. Um, and uh, we look forward to, uh, again, next week, I'm gonna be talking about a, a few more of the things of the, of, of the prophet. I'm gonna talk about some of the things that prophets do uh, in helping to build, because I think that that is very important and that we stay connected uh, to uh, the, um, the church, which is where God has established his church as the foundation of the truth. So have a great night. God bless you. Good night. Bye.